So once our MATLAB environment has initialized, we can access the Simulink start page by clicking on the Simulink icon here. And then we'll go to blank model. The best thing to do with the blank model is to save it in a convenient location with a meaningful name. So I'll call this one example model and then hit the save button. Now to access our blocks, we can get them all from the library browser. Uh, this icon here is for the library browser and I can click that and it'll display a list of all the groups of um, blocks we'll need. Most of the common blocks that we'll use in this subject can be found under the Simulink category. So to find the sine wave, I can navigate to the sources block and scroll down and click and drag the sine wave into the Simulink model. Then we'll need to integrate the sine wave, so if I navigate to the continuous group, uh, look for the integrator block and add that to the model as well. Uh, since the task requires us to display the two signals at the same time on the scope, we can use a multiplexer to convert the signal into a time series with two rows. So if I go to commonly used blocks, uh, look for the mux and add that to the model. So we want one signal to go into the MUX to be the, uh, the sine wave and the other to be the sine wave that's passed through the integrator. And the final step is to connect the scope, which happens to also be in the con commonly used blocks. So I can drag that into the model as well. So the simulation time is displayed up here. It's 10 seconds. So I'll, I'll press this green play button, which will run the model. And if I double click on the scope, it'll visualize the results of the simulation. So we have a sine wave and a cosine wave. The initial conditions assumed to be zero by the integrator, but if I wanted to, I could change that. So we could have it start from the negative um, cosine of zero. And this will remove that DC offset. So now both waveforms will have the same amplitude. 